Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free. We've golden soil and wealth for toil, our home is good by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts, our beauty rich and rare. In history's page let every stage advance Australia fair. In joyful strains then let us sing. Advance Australia fair. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this wonderful occasion. To begin today's ceremony, the University of Newcastle respectfully acknowledges the traditional custodians, the Pambalong clan of the Awabakal people, on whose traditional land this campus is located. I have only uh, recently joined the university in the role of Chancellor, and these are the first graduations it's been my privilege to address. Having had one ceremony this morning, I'm now an old hand, but I must say to any of you graduates that feel uh, a little nervous and apprehensive, you can take comfort from the fact that I feel exactly the same way. I'm immensely proud to be Chancellor of such a prestigious, successful institution. As an Overcastrian myself, I'm passionate about the revitalisation of our great city and our wider region from the mid-north mid coast of New South Wales to the central coast. I'm also convinced of the pivotal role that the U University of Newcastle will play in creating the future of our region. The provision of higher education drives economic growth and social advancement. I'm proud of this institution's standing as one of the leading universities in Australia in terms of socioeconomic equity and providing a world-class education to people from all walks of life. The proportion of students coming into the University of Newcastle from low socioeconomic backgrounds is more than 26%. It's way above the national average, which is 16%. But more than that, we retain more than 80% of those students, which mean that, means that they're not just enrolling, but they're graduating, and some of them are with us today. We know too that background is no barrier to success, that given access to higher education, students from all socioeconomic backgrounds achieve at virtually the same rate as their peers. Graduates, regardless of where you came from, today you take with you a degree from a world-class institution that ranks in the top 3% of universities in the entire world, and in the top 50 universities in the world under 50 years old. As you go out into the world and people ask you where you graduated from, here are a few things you can proudly state. You're graduating from the most research intensive regional university in Australia. It's two research institutes, the Newcastle Institute for Energy and Resources and the Hunter Medical Research Institute are a clear demonstration of the university's recognition of the needs of our communities and of the benefits which flow from partnerships with industry and business. We are planning on expanding our interaction with industry and businesses in our region and on developing more research and innovation hubs over the next few years. The university you are graduating from employs academics who are consistently recognised through national and state awards for their work and experts who rank in the top 1% in the world in their field. The quality of our staff is reflected in the quality of our graduates. And here again, you're in good company. Chong Chua Kun Heen graduated with a Bachelor of Architecture from the University of Newcastle in 1981. 
and has become a global leader in urban renewal. He's now responsible for Singapore's urban design, which has won many international awards. Yasser Hamid graduated with a Bachelor of Mechanical Engineering in 2002. He is now responsible for the research and development behind producing high-end digital effects and animation for the feature films Beowulf, uh, Alice in Wonderland and Tangled. Yasser also developed animation software tools for use in Happy Feet. Donna Odegaard is another fine example. Donna graduated with a Master of Philosophy in 2002 from the University of Newcastle and was appointed Chief Executive of Radio Larrakia in 2005, where she oversaw the restructure and redevelopment of that station. She then went on to com complete her Doctor of Philosophy at the University of Newcastle in 2011. Today you are, you are united with achievers like Chong Chua Kun Heen, Yasser Hamid and Donna Odegaard and the people sitting around you as an alumnus of the university. Our alumni network stretches around the world and keeps you connected to the universities. As you move from today, I encourage you to stay in touch through our social media channels. Your input is var valuable. There's much more in store. New Directions, our university strategic plan, is well underway. As we deliver on that plan, the university will drive the change our regions will see in the coming decades. Our campuses will continue to attract students from across the region, the country and from around the world and give them a great education. Our researchers will pioneer innovation to help ensure our economy goes from strength to strength. Our city campus, the New Space Project, will be part of a major regeneration and development in Newcastle's CBD. These are exciting times for the whole university community. Today is a time for celebration. This, this ceremony marks an important milestone for you the graduates. It is the culmination of many years of hard work and a celebration of your commitment, your sacrifices, the friendships you've made and most importantly your accomplishments. We extend a very special welcome to those of your families that have travelled uh, great distances to be here today. This afternoon I see before me future engineers, business professionals and architects. All of you have worked hard to earn the testoma presented to you today. It is more than a piece of paper. It is a symbol of all you've experienced during your time here at the university. And of the support of family, friends, partners and teachers through the journey. Take what you've learned at university and apply it to every aspect of your life. Each and every one of you will achieve in different ways because you're each unique individuals. Be proud of those achievements. To you all, congratulations and the very best of luck for the future. I now call upon the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Carolyn McMillan, to introduce today's occasional speaker. Chancellor, members of the Council, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. John Blakemore as this afternoon's occasional speaker. John is internationally recognised for his contribution to international management consulting and industrial engineering. John also happens to be the University of Newcastle's very first graduate. John was awarded a Bachelor of Science in 1964 from our antecedent institution, the Newcastle University College. And in 1966, one year after the University of Newcastle gained autonomy, he became our first graduate and was awarded a Master of Science. John's study continued and in 1969, he graduated from the university with a PhD as an International Nickel Fellow. He went on to complete postdoctoral studies in nuclear physics at the University of New South Wales. During his distinguished career, 
John held positions with various multinational companies in senior executive management positions. Blakemore Consulting International, which John established in 1987, regularly consults to companies in Australia and throughout Asia in the fields of innovation, human resources, business processes and systems. John has worked with and consulted to some of the most well-known and successful companies and organisations in the world, including Panasonic, Pirelli, BHP, Canon, Honda, Cochlear, Speedo and the CSRO. In 2007, he was voted one of the top 10 engineers in Australia for engineering innovation and expertise by Engineers Australia. John is a former director of the Institute of Industrial Engineers Australia, a former president of the Manufacturing Society of Australia, and has held numerous board positions and advisory roles at the Australian Institute of Management and the Australian Government's Industrial Research and Development Board. He was a fellow of the Graduate School of Engineering Innovation and is currently a fellow of the Australian Institute of Company Directors, the Institution of Engineers, the Australian Institute of Management and the Quality Society of Australia. He has authored six books on productivity, quality and innovation and has contributed to numerous patents in areas such as the manufacturing processes and systems, steel making, liquid aluminium filtration, galvanising, plastic injection moulding and aluminium processing. He has also developed numerous new mathematical algorithms for enterprise resource planning systems to aid and drive productivity. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. John Blakemore to give this afternoon's occasional address. Thank you, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, members of the Council, staff of the University, families and friends of the graduates and most importantly the graduates. As the first graduate of this University in 1966, it gives me great pleasure to address you here today. I have watched with great delight the growth of what has become a highly regarded tertiary institution from what we used to call the old tech at Tyers Hill. I would like to talk to you about two major influences on my life and I believe they will be major influences on yours. These are change and innovation. Much of my PhD involved nuclear irradiation. So after studying postdoctoral nuclear engineering, I had my heart set on building the first nuclear reactor in Australia. It was never built and so my career path disappeared. My professional life then developed it to accommodate change and innovation. As an example, who would have thought that a career of one person would spread from spraying liquid steel at 1,600 degrees centigrade with liquid oxygen at minus 196 degrees centigrade and then also then later studying the explosion of a 250 millimetre thick nuclear reactor and later observing the launch at Homebush, Homebush, Homebush Olympic Pool, the latest range of seasons, latest seasons range of female swimwear worn by Australia's most attractive models. Now I ask you, where would you rather be? Changing careers is no longer unusual and you must be ready for it. The best preparation is a good university education and awareness that the learning process never stops. Any vision of the future rests firmly on the foundations of the past. I'm sure you all know that Isaac Newton once said, I see further because I stand on the shoulders of giants. So to succeed, you must firstly learn from the past and build a learning future. The university education you have received here will enable you to do that with unbridled success. 
The world is changing very quickly. Digital data now enables us to innovate faster than ever before. When I first used a computer at this university, it was housed in a separate building some distance from the lab, and I had to book in eight weeks in advance to use it. The, the university has certainly come a long way since then. And the same thing applies to Newcastle City. It shed the old industries of the past and embraced new industries for the future. You must be at the heart of this creativity and research needed to use new digital data more effectively to innovate new products and processes. Aristophanes, born in 276 BC, measured the circumference of the Earth at 40,000 kilometres with a stick. Now just think about that. This is the sort of innovation we need for the future. So let your imagination run wild. Consider this. The idea is just there, locked inside. All I have to do is remove the excess stone, Michelangelo. Or perhaps this gem. Computers in the future will make way no more than 1.5 tonnes. Popular Mechanics, 1949. Here is another. It is impossible for anything heavier than air to fly. The Royal Society, London, 1895. 640K should be enough for any computer. Bill Gates, 1981. I think there is a world market for maybe five computers. Thomas Watson, CEO of IBM, 1943. Now, Albert Einstein once postulated there was a cosmological term to explain the stability of the universe. Five years later, he described this as the greatest blunder of his life. However, with the latest advances in string theory, it looks like he was right the first time. So even the best of us are unable to grasp the full significance of all the events of the world that are happening around us. Accelerated technological developments, compounds constructed molecule by molecule, solids constructed atom by atom, cloning, genetic, genetic engineering, and at this university, photovoltaic paints, climate change, it goes on. An endless stream of new ideas and opportunities. Many, many multinational companies now have sales in excess of the GDP of some countries. So who rules the world? The world has suddenly become smaller, faster, but alas, no more compassionate. National boundaries are being dissolved by social media. Small businesses can sell, from the world, sell to the world from their home. And personal wealth of one man can become greater than the total GDP of a country. The real world possesses a new set of challenges for all graduates, very different from those you have faced in the past. You are at the very beginning of a very exciting journey. Success will depend on your adaptability, your innovation, your creativity, and your enthusiasm to embrace change and further develop your skills built on the solid educational foundations you have gained here. We need enthusiastic, intelligent, creative, well-educated people like yourselves, people capable of thinking outside the square as well as asking why and asking why not. Australia is rebuilding. We are the envy of the world. But it is mainly because of our incredible, incredible mineral wealth, wealth in what is in the ground, not wealth created by our, ourselves. We cannot afford to continue along this path and ride on the back of high commodity prices and mining. We need new innovative thinkers casting off old habits. An eminent economist from Cambridge in 2008 in Sydney, when he analysed Australia's GDP, said the most important contributor to Australian manufacturing productivity was warehousing. So if you close a manufacturing site and import and establish a warehouse, this contributes to our productivity. I say graduates, you've got some work to do. Over the last 30 years, our company has diligently studied and worked with what we consider to be the best companies in the world and your Vice-Chancellor read some of those out. As an example of thinking outside the square, I'll give you this little snippet, because it was done in the Hunter Valley. In 1995, I measured the efficiency of a coal mine in the Hunter Valley and measured it at 32%. <coughs> the management were quite scathing of my report. They said, that's absolute rubbish. We've had McKinsey's in here, and it's 98%. What a difference. 32% to 98%. In less than six months, we worked and improved the productivity of the mine, the whole mine, by 16%. However, the coal loader at Newcastle could no longer cope with the extra volume of coal, and the improvement program ceased 
Was that a, a decision with vision? All this raises simple issues on the definition of efficiency and productivity. Economists, engineers and politicians can't agree, but while we think we are good at 98% and fail to see the significance of the 32%, we are thinking inside the square. It requires clever young people like you to break this mould and remove the excess stone. How far would Mondelay have got or progressed with the periodic table of elements if everyone had a, defi a different definition of atomic weight? How far would Aristophanes got measuring the circumference of the Earth with a stick in approximately 300 BC if he hadn't realised the opportunity presented to him as the sun passed overhead on a vacant well? Businesses more in the future than the past must be fast, creative, adaptable and move at high velocity with great innovation, more adaptability and more creativity. A Newcastle example of this, I think, is a good one. Australia became a world leader, as we did in Newcastle, with a product you now know, know as Colour Bond. At the time, it was called Zincaloon. Our team worked on this product by using a range of licensing agreements, patent and research papers, to innovate and speed up the production line and increase productivity and reduce costs. We became the world leaders. We solved all these problems because of the training and education delivered by this university. So I think you can be very proud. Agents of change and innovation are targeted, sometimes mercilessly, because they are attacking cherished ideas that are well established. But innovate we must. I left research when I could no longer tolerate directors saying to me that we can't commercialise that idea because no one else in the world is doing it. No one else in the world is doing it. So let me return to the swimwear parade at Homebush Pool. From steel to swimwear, to timber, to coal mines, to nuclear power stations, to aluminium smelters, to cement factories and blast furnaces and pharmaceuticals and computers, the world is your oyster. So savour the moment. The future is about opportunity, creativity, innovation and change. As you move around the world in business, you will find that the goalposts are always shifting. When you try to forecast where you will finish, you will find the finishing line has been moved. But with the start this university has given you, you will succeed. So the future is yours. Your degree is just the start. The idea is there, inside, locked inside. All you have to do is remove the excess stone. Thank you. Thank you very much for what I found, and I'm sure you did as well, to be a very inspiring and helpful talk. Uh, when you think back at John's career and, and, and look at the variation and change, it's mind-boggling and it obviously hasn't stopped yet and his challenge is a very good one for all of you. Um, the notion of, 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 of seeking unconstrained change, uh, the challenge of making a good idea into something which is a viable business, and then I think finally, the opportunity to improve the productivity that's associated with how that process works. John has done it all and, uh, and uh, I found his uh, talk today absolutely riveting. So thank you very much, John, indeed. I'd now like to call on Professor Brett Ninnis, Acting Pro Vice-Chancellor for the Faculty of Engineering and the Built Environment to present graduates from that faculty. Chancellor, I present to you the candidates who have fulfilled the conditions for admission to awards of this university. I request that awards be conferred in absentia upon the other graduates whose names appear in the graduation ceremony handbook. Professor Ninnis, I have pleasure in conferring awards on all candidates who have complied with the prescribed requirements of their degrees. Chancellor, I present to you research higher degree candidates from the Faculty of Engineering and Built Environment. Chancellor, a higher degree by research is awarded to a graduate who has successfully completed a program of study in which the defining characteristic is research. Doctor of Philosophy graduates have undertaken a program of independent supervised study for the equivalent of four years of full-time study. 
These graduates have produced significant and original research outcomes, culminating in a thesis which has been independently examined by external expert examiners of international standing. These graduates have developed a substantial body of knowledge at the frontier of a field of work, or learning that constitutes an original contribution. They can apply their knowledge and skills to demonstrate autonomy, authoritative judgment, adaptability and responsibility as an expert and leading scholar and the ongoing capacity to generate new knowledge. Today, the university is proud to honour graduates who have satisfied the rigorous criteria for the award of Doctor of Philosophy. Chancellor, I present to you Igor Avila Chavez. He holds a Bachelor of Civil Engineering from Federal University of Vicosa, Brazil, and a Master of Civil Engineering, Structural Engineering from University of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Dr. Chavez's thesis is entitled, Development of Behaviour Models for Pitting Corrosion of Mild Steel Pipeline Worlds in Marine Environment. Chancellor, I present Dr. Avila Chavez. Chancellor, I present to you Xiaoling Chen, who holds a Bachelor of Engineering and a Master of Engineering from Central South University, China. Dr. Chen's thesis is entitled, Experimental and Numerical Investigation of Dust Emissions from Transfer Chutes. Chancellor, I present Dr. Chen. Chancellor, I present to you Brianna Chesworth, who holds a Bachelor of Construction Management Building with Honours Class 1 from this university. Dr Chesworth's thesis is entitled Cultural Maturity Modelling for Lean Organisations. Chancellor, I present Dr Chesworth. Chancellor, I present to you Matthew Fairbairn, who holds a Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering with Honours Class 1 from this university. Dr Fairbairn's thesis is entitled, Feedback Control of an, the Atomic Force Microscope Micro Cantilever for Improved Imaging. Chancellor, I present Dr Fairbairn. Chancellor, I present to you Dusan Illich, who holds a Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering with Honours Class II Division I from this university. Dr Illich's thesis is entitled, Bulk Solid Interactions in Belt Conveying Systems. Chancellor, I present Dr Illich. Chancellor, I present to you MD Nur al-Islam, who holds a Bachelor of Science in Electrical and Electronic Engineering from Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, Bangladesh, and a Master of Science in Engineering from Dhaka University of Technology and Engineering, Gazipur, Bangladesh. Dr Islam's thesis is entitled, Multi-Link Mechanical Locomotors in Natural Gates, Controller Design and Experiments. Chancellor, I present Dr Islam. Chancellor, I present to you Alan Murray, who holds a Bachelor of Engineering in Computer Engineering with Honours Class 1 and a Graduate Certificate in Innovation and Commercialisation from this university. Dr Murray's thesis is entitled, Algorithms and Hardware Implementation of a Processor for Low Complexity and High Performance Multi-Antenna Receivers. Chancellor, I present Dr Murray.
Chancellor, I present to you Christian Perfumo, who holds a Bachelor of Computer Science from the National University of the Patagonia, San Juan Bosco, Argentina. Dr. Perfumo's thesis is entitled, Dynamic Modeling and Control of Heterogeneous Populations of Thermostatically Controlled Loads. Chancellor, I present Dr. Perfumo. Chancellor, I present to you Udon Fanalassi, who holds a Diploma of Science from the National University of Laos, Laos and a Master of Science from Charles Darwin University. Dr. Fanalassi's thesis is entitled Anti-Magic Labelling of Graphs. Chancellor, I present Dr. Fanalassi. Chancellor, I present to you Wendy Van Pin, who holds a Bachelor of Engineering with Honours, first class, from the University of Mauritius, Mauritius. Dr. Van Pin's thesis is entitled, Chemical Trapping of Nitric Oxide by Aromatic Nitrososulfonates. Chancellor, I present Dr. Van Pin. Chancellor, I present to you Yan Shu, who holds a Bachelor of Engineering from South China University of Technology, Wushan, Gangzhou, China. Dr. Shu's thesis is entitled, Dynamic Security Assessment and Control of Modern Power Systems Using Intelligent System Technologies. Chancellor, I present Dr. Shu. Chancellor, I present to you Guo Heng Zhang, who holds a Bachelor of Software Engineering and a Master of Computer, so of Computer Software and Theory from Nankai University, China. Dr. Zhang's thesis is entitled, Quality Attributes Modeling in Feature Models and Feature Model Validation in Software Product Lines. Chancellor, I present Dr. Zhang. Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of research higher degree graduates. Chancellor, a university medal may be awarded to a candidate who has displayed exceptional academic ability. To be considered for this award, a graduate must have a consistent record of exceptional academic achievement at all levels of their degree program and qualify with the highest level of that degree. Today, I'm proud to be recognising two such outstanding scholars from the Faculty of Engineering and Built Environment. Chancellor, it is with great pleasure that I present to you, graduating with a Master of Architecture with Honours Class One and the University Medal, Christopher Mullaney. Chancellor, it is with great pleasure that I present to you graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Software Engineering and Honours Class One and the University Medal, Sean Atkins. Chancellor, I now present to you graduates who have satisfied the requirements of a postgraduate award
from the Faculty of Engineering and Built Environment. Graduating with a Master of Architecture with Honours Class 1, Adam Bennett. Graduating with a Master of Architecture with Honours Class 1, Stiani Cilia. <laughs> Graduating with a Master of Architecture with Honours Class 2, Division 1, Bradley Phillips. Theodora Woodward. <laughs> Graduating with a Master of Engineering Management with distinction, Pierre Guyer. Graduating with a Master of Engineering Management, Hane M. Abbas. <laughs> Nirab Khaki. Graduating with a Master of Engineering Science with distinction, Timothy Stonehouse. I now have great delight in presenting the first graduate from a Master of Project Management for the Built Environment with distinction, Tara Philpott. Graduating with a Master of Property, Benjamin Bianchi. <laughs> Richard Ham. Jonathan Herb. <laughs> Stephen Sello. Graduating with a Graduate Certificate in Innovation and Commercialisation, Jennifer Haynes. <laughs> Chancellor, I now present to you graduates who have satisfied the requirements for a bachelor's degree from the Faculty of Engineering and the Built Environment. Graduating with a Bachelor of Computer Science with distinction, Mitchell Chapman. Thank you. Graduating with a Bachelor of Computer Science, Ali Sadradini. Bradley Williams. 
Graduating with a Bachelor of Construction Management, Building, with Honours Class II, Division II, Jonathan Farrer. <laughs> Trent Hutchings. Graduating with a Bachelor of Construction Management, Building, Catherine Cramp. <laughs> Suleiman Jabate. Graduating with a Bachelor of Design Architecture, Georgia Brennan. <laughs> Ryan Briggs. Brendan Farrer. <laughs> Ryan Jago. <laughs> Just David. Galia Javidi. Xiao Jun Fang. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Chemical Engineering and Bachelor of Science, Luke Harvey. Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering and Bachelor of Business, David Quinn. <laughs> Benjamin Sinclair. Gradu graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering with Honours Class II, Division I. Bachelor of Engineering in Environmental Engineering with Honours Class II, Division I as well. Anthony Brown. <laughs> graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering with Honours Class II, Division II and Bachelor of Engineering in Environmental Engineering with Honours Class II, Division II, Scott Sharma. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering with Honours Class II, Division I, and a Bachelor of Surveying with Honours Class II, Division I, Alan O'Connell.
graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering with Honours Class 1, Stephanie Lyons. Zane Rendell. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering with Honours Class 2, Division 1, Scott Brownsmith. Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering with Honours Class 2, Division 2, Georgia Bertram. <laughs> Alan Blackman. Luke Fraser. <laughs> Benjamin Stoymanoff. Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering, Julian Kavikia. <laughs> Benjamin Edwards. John Johnston. <laughs> Anthony Shaw. Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering with Honours Class 2, Division 1, Cho Su Lin. Nathan Klassen. John Porter. <laughs> Benjamin Slater. Rowan Yap. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Environmental Engineering, Vivian Chu. Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering with Honours Class 1 and a Bachelor of Science, Alexander Post. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering, 
uh, and a Bachelor of Engineering in Mechatronics Engineering, Kels Bolden. Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering with Honours Class 1, Bradley Fowler. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering with Honours Class 1, Liam Titmarsh. Matthew Watson. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering with Honours Class 2, Division 1, Stuart MacDonald. Ognin Orozovic. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering, Barry Barnett. James Bradley. <laughs> Alistair Grady. <laughs> Thomas Hardigan. Joshua Patterson. Christopher Younger. Adrian Zeltons. Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Mechatronics Engineering with Honours Class 2, Division 1, David Miller. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Mechatronics Engineering, James Cowan. Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Software Engineering with Honours Class 2, Division 1, Alastair Horsley. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Engineering in Software Engineering, Joel Downey. Graduating with a Bachelor of Industrial Design, Nurse Sabrina Mohammed Anwar. <laughs> Amanda Williams.
Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of graduates from the Faculty of Engineering and Built Environment. We'll now enjoy a, a musical interlude by Miranda Arigi and Callum Close performing Violin Sonata No. 1 in D major, Movement 3, Rondo Allegro. Uh, I would like to also add that uh, both Miranda and Callum are graduating with a Bachelor of Music degree from this university tomorrow. So welcome.
Thank you, Miranda and Callum, for that truly beautiful performance. I now call on Professor Saros, uh, Deputy Head of the Faculty of Business and Law, to present graduates from that faculty. Chancellor. Chancellor, I, present, I now present to you graduates who have satisfied the requirements of the postgraduate award from the Faculty of Business and Law. Graduating with the Master of Business, Lu Xing. <laughs> Graduating with the Master of Business, Chao Liu. Chancellor, I now present to you graduates who have satisfied the requirements for a bachelor's degree from the Faculty of Business and Law. Graduating with a combined Bachelor of Business and Bachelor of Commerce, Tyler Ashwell. <laughs> Steve Aslanides. Chloe Batchelor <laughs> Michelle Carney <laughs> Stuart Flynn Gian Gator <laughs> Alexander Gregory <laughs> Cynthia Makoa Benjamin Nagel <laughs> Stefan Zengovsky <laughs> Graduating with the Bachelor of Business, Larissa Adamchik. Emily Albury. <laughs> Lauren Armstrong. <laughs> Samuel Austin. Nicholas Bale. <laughs> Reese Brack. <laughs> K. 
Carla Brandstatter. Yoon E. Cho. Adam De La Grotta. Danielle Doppler. Lisa Dornan. Chi Fung. Sarah Fennell. Matthew Foster. Alexander Gillespie. Monica Harris. Zoe Lee Harvison. Melanie Heppel. Mark Hiscock. Alexander Hobart. Ian Holden. <laughs> Jo Jong Hoon. Ashley Hughes. Taryn Hunt. Atai Kambarami. Ruth Curley. Danielle Knight. Ashley Knox. (laughs) 
Oliver Leach. Ki Chin Eugene Leong. Edmund Locke. Li Lu. Alexander McBride. Shanae Mullins. <laughs> Hannah Myers. Yong Hoon Park. <laughs> Bailden Pepperell. Justine Pichiloff. <laughs> Angela Safari. <laughs> Robin Shearer. Trent Shorten. <laughs> Elizabeth Spaulding. Alexandra Sutherland. Brandon Sutherland. Lisa Tate. Brandon Taylor. Brittany Taylor. Matthew Walton. Gemma War.
Rowan Wilson. Xinwei Zhang. Graduating with a Bachelor of Commerce with distinction, Christopher Gaffel. Bianca Mitchell. <laughs> Selena Stonehouse. Graduating with a Bachelor of Commerce, Mohammed Imram Abdul Rashid. <laughs> Natalie Beckers. Melanie Brassington. <laughs> Jack Buttonshaw. <laughs> Daniel Carr. Yat Kit Chung. <laughs> Min Su Che. Jin A. Che. <laughs> Chloe Dean Gordon. <laughs> Bryce Dean. Matthew Dennis. <laughs> Dominic Dowling. Jesse Ann Evans. <laughs> Kelly Gallagher. Bronwyn Harris. <laughs> Kevin Helmers. <laughs> K. 
Katie Hinwood. Daniel Howarth. Yeah. Han Chao Hyun. Sarah Highland. <laughs> Wade Johnson. <laughs> Jessica Keaton. Tai Nyun Lai. Andrew Lindner. Justin McElhenney. Stephen Miller. <laughs> Thomas Newton. <laughs> Matthew Norman. Emily Norris. <clears throat> Rebecca Northey. <clears throat> Alex O'Loughlin. Jared Penno. <laughs> Timothy Rossington. <laughs> Daniel Skelton. Bunyan Suan Hang Hang Tian Nicholas Turon. <laughs> Kai.
Cassandra Boglevsky. Michael Wright. Tianyi Yong. Lei Yui. He Chao Jung. <laughs> Yuin Jung. Graduating with the Bachelor of Management, Gillian Carroll. <laughs> Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of graduates from the Faculty of Business and Law. Thank you. I now have great pleasure in inviting Sean Atkins, who has just graduated with a Bachelor of Engineering in Software Engineering with Honours First Class and the University Medal to speak on behalf of the graduates. Sean. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, members of the council, staff of the university, families and friends of graduates, and most importantly, all the graduates here. I'm privileged to have the opportunity to speak on behalf of those ending this chapter of university at this afternoon's graduation ceremony. When I was asked to give this speech on behalf of my peers, I wondered how I could adequately acknowledge and appeal to the diverse backgrounds we've come from and the distinct paths that we've all taken through university. I soon realised that it is our varied backgrounds and the resulting interactions that's enriched our time here and made our learning experience more worthwhile. So we've been here for, for three or four years or more for the part-time students among us. So regardless of the study that we've engaged in, be it business, design, commerce, property or engineering, we've all reached a significant junction in our lives. I'd like to share a personal experience as I feel it embodies the strengths we've all demonstrated. My father passed away late in year nine. And as a result, I struggled to find the motivation to finish my school certificate and my higher school certificate. When I came here along with a horde of other enthusiastic graduates, I wasn't exactly penciled as a successful one. I was only admitted on bonus points for attending my local university. Fast forwarding to today, I represent a group of individuals who have undoubtedly overcome equal challenges. I'm surrounded by people who have grown and learned beyond the bounds that they thought previously contained them. These are people who have not only learned, but have learned how to learn. So it's that tenacity and purpose that has carried every one of us forward to today. But we can all reflect on the journey and remember that it hasn't been an easy one. We've, we all have memories of the difficult times and the sacrifices we've made to reach the end of our degrees. Families, friends, social lives and leisure activities have all taken a beating over the last few years and I'm sure that we've all had sleepless nights and countless days away from sunshine and civilization trying to meet deadlines. We've all questioned our commitment wondering if perhaps other avenues would have been easier or potentially facilitated more regular sleeping patterns. Regardless, everyone graduating today has made it. During our degrees, we've all gained knowledge and experience in our chosen areas. Some amongst us will have already secured job opportunities. Some will have a clear idea of where they're headed. Each one of us has been equipped with the skills to e easily bridge the gap between um, university and the industry or university and further academia. Of course, there will also be individuals among us who are unsure of their next movements, potentially overwhelmed by the possibilities and doors that have opened. 
I would remind all those unsure that not, not all those who wander are lost. Each and every one of us will find our calling. To paraphrase Steve Jobs, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. Believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart, even when it leads you off the well-worn path, and that will make all the difference. So having finished this iteration of uni, we've connected another sequence of dots in our past. Looking forward, we create new dots, and that is an exciting prospect. So despite parting ways, we'll all face a common set of challenges going forward. Our ideas and beliefs will be challenged by the press pressures and voices of today's world. We'll be tested and expected to conform and join a convoy treading the known path. Each one of us should continue questioning these norms and approach problems with an open, pragmatic and erudite mind. We should all endeavour to reach and exceed any goals we set ourselves. And like John previously, we should all continue to innovate. I'd again like to thank those who have supported us during our learning. A special thanks goes out to the teaching staff and all of the staff at the university who have performed outstandingly throughout, throughout our time here. Graduates, I extend another commendation for your hard work and join all your supporters to wish you every success going forward. Success is to achieve or accomplish an aim or task. We have successfully completed this chapter at the University of Newcastle. To conclude, I offer an alternate definition of success we can apply to being successful graduates, spoken by Ellen at a similar occasion. The definition of success changes. Success is to live your life with integrity and not to give in to peer pressure to become something you're not. Follow your passion, stay true to yourself. Never follow someone else's path. Unless you're lost in a forest and you see a path, then by all means you should follow that. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you very much, Sean, for your speech. I, I think it was fantastic and uh, uh, not only very well delivered, but I'm sure there was something in your speech for all of us here today. Well done. I hope you all enjoyed today's ceremony and thank you for joining the university community in the celebration of the awarding of degrees. Before I declare the ceremony concluded, I'd like to invite the Dias party and all of our guests in the hall to stand and join me in applauding the wonderful achievements of our graduates. Thank you. I now declare the ceremony concluded, but I'd like to, uh, with my colleagues, ask you to join us now in the graduate reception in the uh, Brennan Room uh, to, con to continue in celebrating this special day together. Thank you all very much. <laughs>